Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My office has been flooded in recent weeks with calls and emails from concerned citizens who are expressing their deep distress at the proposed a logging in West Bay. between Creek outdoor enthusiasts logging and a caution-based logging company. Looking to spray lakes and wildfire fires. Other fire arguments, fire including fire 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 to the minister, to be which is now. to the over minister. Over 700 Four hectares of forest, but government officials say that's what's needed to protect the community. So the area west of Bragg Creek has uh, some interesting challenges for us. It is part of our forest management agreement area, which means we have the right to manage it for a supply of timber for, for the mill. But at the same time, it's zoned for multiple use and has all sorts of extra other stakeholder interests and involvements in the area. It has a high recreational use, uh, a very active recreational trail system. Uh, there's a lot of uh, domestic grazing that goes on in there. There's oil and gas activity. Uh, it's close to Calgary, it's, it's a highly visual, uh, aesthetically pleasing area. So our challenge as a company is how do we manage our FMA, how do we manage it for a supply of wood, and recognize all these other values at the same time. A lot of folks from Bragg Creek have kind of interpreted that we're using either mountain pine beetle or the risk of wildfire threat to the community as an excuse to go in there and log. So there's a few reality checks that we have to have. We know that that area would have been harvested regardless. It is part of a working forest, it is part of a managed forest. It would have been sequenced eventually uh, for harvest. We've been asked by the Forest Service if there's some way that we can develop our harvest plan in a way that could at the same time help develop a bit of a fire containment line. The community of Bragg Creek has been modeled as one of the highest at-risk communities for wildfire in the province. The cut blocks themselves were not meant to actually, okay, the fire's gonna come along, it's gonna stop right here and, and just all on its own. Under the right conditions, you can, you can have a forest fire and it'll turn into basically a crown fire very quickly. And that's when the, the flames, they basically, they, they may have started on the ground, but they climb up the trunks of the trees and now they're, they're in the crown of the trees. And basically once they're there, all, they basically travel with the wind. So the idea was if you have a stand of mature trees with a crown fire in it and it hits a cut block, there's no more crown for that fire to continue on to. So it goes from being a crown fire back down to a ground fire where wild firefighters can, can fight it effectively. I mean, there, there were some people that had concerns about yeah, are we negatively affecting wildlife? Are we going to be negatively affecting the, the water supply and the water quality? Spray Lake Sawmills has negotiated a set of operating ground rules together with the province. These ground rules end up defining things like classifications of streams and how we're going to buffer or accommodate them within our operations so those streams are protected. Very often our internal practices are in fact a step above what we're required to do by provincial policy. Uh, such things as putting in clear spread bridges instead of culverts uh, in certain situations, uh, and how we build the bridges in, in the first place. Uh, when it comes to overall water, the whole overall watershed, you, you only ever want to take a certain percentage of the available timber at any given time to make sure that you're not having a, a negative impact on the, on the water supply and, the, and on the watershed. It's one, another one of those balancing acts where we want to be able to, to harvest but at the same time not harvest so much to the point where there's where you're negatively impacting the watershed. We've basically taken our entire uh, FMA and split it up into different sections and said okay if we log this area this year we don't want to come back to here for 5, 10, 15 years so we're not logging more than what the, the watershed can handle. The recreational use and activity, uh, people coming out from Calgary, is a lot more than it ever used to be. So we don't have that luxury, as we did in the past, of simply having a, a spatial separation between conflicting uses. Now we actually have to learn how to get along together. And basically what that means, in short, 
is collaboration. We developed what was called the West Bragg Creek Land Users Group. Through that process, we were involving some of the stakeholders, ranchers, uh, oil and gas, the Greater Bragg Creek Trails Association, uh, the Calgary Mountain Bike Alliance. There's a number of different uh, groups that were associated with that. We sat down with them and reviewed the, uh, the harvest plans, and then uh, changes were made to incorporate more of their concerns, and then the models were rerun to ensure that it still met the objectives for the fire protection. What we tried to do the best of our ability was was uh, time out the logging so that the cut blocks that were adjacent to ski trails, we wanted to cut those in the summertime, and the ones that were adjacent to kind of the hiking and the biking trails, we wanted to cut those preferably in the wintertime so that um, people could still use the, the different trails in the area. Um, some, some areas were just outright dropped from a timber supply objective. There was, there was some blocks in the area that we thought would be good ones to pick up while we were in the area. Just th through the concerns and the feedback that we got, there was a lot of trails kind of immediately around those, uh, those cut blocks. So some of those areas like that just got completely dropped off the plan. Uh, some people um, just do not want to see harvesting. Uh, they do not want to see logging in the area. That's not going to happen. We have to look at a collaborative approach in meeting everybody's objectives out on the landscape. There's some things that people brought to our attention that, okay, I hadn't, hadn't thought of it from that particular point of view. and and. So now it's always in the back of my mind, okay, there, there's people out there that have these views and, and how can I incorporate these, this into other plans that I put together, so. We've historically ended up developing a harvest plan. There's been recreation plans, wildlife plans, range management plans, etc. All individual plans with a different focus, all on the same piece of ground. So I think going forward, what we need to try to do is, is break down some of those historical silos and learn how to truly develop an integrated plan with all these different values right from the ground up. And I think with that in mind, you know, we'll have a much better chance of having a plan that everybody's going to be happy with.